entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? What's up guys? This is the build that you guys have been asking for from my one shot challenge run from our profit OP and 20 minute starter guide. I'm going to show you guys kind of what makes the build so strong and address a lot of the questions and concerns from the comment section of the uh, starter guide and get into some of the math on why I think that on this patch it's even stronger than it was on the last patch when I did my one shot challenge run. So let's dive into the build and explain a little bit more about what we're doing and how we're doing it. All right, guys, so let's talk about stats. Um, we went 150 this time instead of 125 like we did on the bleed build. Um, I guess, you know, 150 is kind of a more organic uh, PvP uh, meta, so we'll kind of call it is what it is. A lot of recommendations, a lot of people asking me to go 150. Um, so here we are. So uh, you can obviously change things around to your liking, but I'm just going to go over uh, what I felt like the most efficient stats at 150 were. Uh, Vigor may seem a little bit low, but this is not a... A melee build so you know you shouldn't be getting hit that much and 35 should give you plenty of life to take a, a big hit or two from the boss and and stay alive so you should have and we'll get more into this later um five tanks out in front of you if you choose to use spirit ashes um so that really vigor at 35 should be more than enough if you want more vigor take thir take five out of decks throw it in there get 40 um or you know whatever you want you could take 10 out of faith and throw a a faith not crystal tier and, and change your your element of choice we'll get more into that later um, there's a couple things you could do there though so mind i went 20 um a lot of people are gonna say oh you know if you're casting you should go more 20 was more than enough for me i just played the entire game through yesterday with this and uh it felt like more than enough for me i was able to get five or six uh lightning spears out and uh two or three giant flame take the and so again you could pull from some decks and, and throw it in mind if you want more i didn't feel like i needed it so i saved you know stats for stuff i felt like was more valuable uh endurance same thing we're not melee so endurance isn't super valuable but it does hold value in the fact that it's used to determine what armor we can wear um so if you're you know wanting to min max definitely go check out the the guide that i posted on armor uh min maxing your armor where we put a whole spreadsheet together uh, with an algorithm that pieced together. It's what we use to get this set that we have on here, uh, min-max, to where it'll give you the best uh, hands, feet, chest, and helm combination from different sets at whatever weight point you have available after your weapons. Uh, so if you really want to get in detail, go check that guide out. And we actually use that uh, that spreadsheet, that algorithm, to get this set together here. Um, obviously, we'll change helmets for pre-buff and stuff like that, but this... Uh, this combination right here that we have on is the uh, absolute most defense you can get uh, on 20 endurance, you know, with the weight allotted and the uh, weapons and, and um, talismans that we have uh, with the allotted weight, you know, up to, you know, a tenth of a pound or so. Um, the absolute best uh, defense and not just physical but also you know the uh, the elemental and and uh, immunity and robustness as well so um, check the guide out if you're interested but yeah that's what that's kind of the theory on what's going on here and why we're not uh, fashion soulsing even though uh you know it doesn't look bad at all um the uh obviously the armor is subject you can change that as well but um we'll get more into that stuff later the strength i went 22 for blasphemous blade um i highly recommend it as you saw from some of those clips i actually took those like an hour ago uh the the one shot that i had on the uh the avatar over in uh near uh, fort ferreth that uh you know it's one of the highest health ones in the game and um you know i, I the, the damage spoke for itself so uh, that sword is definitely worth putting some point on this build um some points into strength uh, as much as we're scaling fire damage and faith um definitely worth putting 22 into strength so that you can use that sword um dexterity is one of those stats where like i said you can pull five from there uh, it's just nice to have because it uh increases the cast speed so because of that and because we're doing so much casting i definitely would put some points into decks again that's the stat i would take from if you guys are wanting to to move stuff elsewhere that's where i would pull from um I also put it there to give you guys a couple weapon choices. We'll get into that later um, without having to make, you know, major changes to the build to just throw on, you know, like a maybe a talisman and give yourself five more decks to get 40. Um, but, you know, like we'll, we'll get into that stuff in a little bit. Intelligence I didn't touch. Uh, we're a faith build. Um, do you want to play Common Azur? Uh, go pick an Astrologer. Uh, this is a, uh, a profit build. So uh, seven there and obviously for the same exact reasoning, uh, 80 faith. 
and you want to make sure you stop at 80 faith because that's where the uh, the second of the two soft caps is um, the final soft cap for incantations you got a 16 and 80 um, so that's why we stopped there and then arcane we're just going to leave at 10 um, unless you wanted to use some of the dragon uh, incantations then push it up to 15 all right guys so let's go over gear so first thing we need to talk about is your seal right that's the most important part of this build um I have a very in-depth guide coming out tomorrow uh, going over uh, the best seals, the difference between all the seals and incant scaling and all that stuff. And we'll talk a little bit more about the buffs that these seals provide later. But all you need to really remember for this build, especially if you're new, if it's lightning, use gravel stone. And if it's fire, use the giant seal. Uh, so this gravel stone seal is what you're going to use every time that you're using like lightning spear, the, uh, you know, our ADLS, any of our like, you know, doesn't matter what kind of lightning it is if it's lightning use this if it's fire use giant seal that's a good general rule of thumb for now so this giant seal here that's your go-to if you're doing fire uh any sort of fire incantation any fire damage this is what you want to have on is the giant seal um again we'll go over a lot more uh detail about them tomorrow in the video going over seals and and it's seals versus you know for all these different builds and here's the Erd tree seal um like i was saying really great incantation scaling uh doesn't have any of those individual uh elemental buffs that the other two have but this is a great seal and early game because your access to somber stones to get it to plus nine early it's the very best early game seal but late game like i said pick one of these two uh, I run this this just for um, seppuku, and it's a incredible uh, critical you know backstab damage weapon. 130 critical score is one of the highest in the game. Um, but really, I mostly use it for seppuku, and I end up using incantations for 90% of the game. Um, you know, running this in an S stock is pretty nice with like Vikes on the S stock. You can do some good damage, but realistically, if you want to do some some serious damage, go with like Sacred Relic Sword if you want some holy damage, and they're weak to holy. Um, go with blasphemous blade if if you you know you can get away with any kind of fire damage uh this sword uh hits like a truck uh blasphemous blade is incredibly fun um the the bolt is decent if you're running that higher decks that's why i kind of left some of that decks in there for some people like this i i already have a lightning spear and it does a ton of damage so i don't really need the weapon art um that's more so a good way to get some lightning on a non-faith build um same with uh the vikes war spear if it's your thing man go for it it's you know it's fire and physical um scales off faith very well this is just for buffing uh, that's why we didn't level it up and same with this just for buffing and we'll talk a lot more about the buffs and stuff later uh, you know me i'm going to give you guys real data uh, we've got some numbers to break it down and explain it better later on but basically all you need to know is that if you're doing incantations uh the jellyfish shield is is great for buffing it gives you a 20 percent increased damage um so Let's uh, talk about some armor. Uh, like we said, the the best in slot uh, for helmet here. But if you're pre-buffing, um, you know you're gonna go with something else. Beast champion armor, uh, best in slot for our chest. And again, reference that spreadsheet. Uh, Ronin's uh, gauntlets and Ronin's greaves are gonna be best in slot for us. Again, reference that armor video. Uh, there's a spreadsheet there, explains everything. It's a really good video, definitely check it out if you got questions how we got here on the armor. Um, you can always go fashion soul, right? Do your thing, do what you wanna do. As with any part of this build, do what makes you happy. Uh, mushroom crown and the white mask, uh, we're gonna be using those a lot to pre-buff. We'll talk about those later. And then the silver tier mask is great uh, for, you know, trying to farm items with the extra arcane or if you want to use the dragon breath attacks. Um, the talismans. Okay, so ritual sword. If you're, you know, not trying to absolutely max out 100% of the damage that the build can do and you got a boss you can relatively easy one shot, uh, you go with that. If you're trying to really push the limit, you go with red feathered. So you go low health with the red feathered or you go full health with the ritual sword. Um, whichever route you want to go, just pick one of those two and run with it. Um you know that's those are those are your first slot your second is godfrey icon almost every spell we'll go over spells later almost every spell in the in the build is a chargeable skill uh spell um so this gives us a flat 15 percent damage basically to the build um so you'll start to see how this uh you know these uh multiplicative buffs help us um but this is huge it's great it works on on uh spells and skills uh flux canvas talisman uh eight percent flat damage on every one of your incantations no matter what definitely have that on your third slot and then your lightning scorpion charm gives us 12 percent um and it's the same for all the scorpion charms so if you're doing fire damage if you're in an area where they're weaker to fire and you're running fire go with the fire scorpion charm if you're running the uh you know the sacred relic sword go with the sacred scorpion charm 
um, to boost that holy damage because that works on weapons as well as incantations. Um, uh, Shard of Alexander, if you are running like uh, the Blasphemous Blade or something like that, a weapon art, uh, run this to boost your skill damage um, and swap out your uh, your Flux Canvas because if you're not running incantation, running a you know more of a weapon build at that point. Um, and then you know Radagon's Ore Seal is really good um, in in place of the the Godfrey Icon because um, Blasphemous Blade is not a charged skill. Um, you can get some defense. You can, I mean, there's really a lot you can do here. Lower some FP consumption. I mean, you can really play with it how you want, but you know, like my recommendations would be, you know, the first ones that I recommended. Um, then the, uh, your flask, you're going to run lightning and flame. Since we pushed the 80 faith, um, we did that so that we could run these without having to stop and change, you know, and run the, uh, the faith not tier and then the lightning. And then if we're doing fire, switch it back to fire. Oil pot, we'll get into this later. 50% more damage um, with your first fire attack following hitting them with an oil pot. This is one of the few things that's that's really cool and definitely worth picking up in the build in terms of um, like consumables. And then the raw meat dumpling we're going to use to apply a self poison with the mushroom crown, and we'll get into you know those uh, you know how much of a buff that stuff is later. But that's another thing that's definitely worth grabbing um, if you're trying to push the limits of the damage of the build. Uh, golden vow so golden vow is a you know an incredible incantation unfortunately it does not stack with the um the rallying standard so the rallying standard gives us 20 percent. this only gives us 15 percent. so i end up using the rallying standard so i'll pop on the rallying standard use it and then just unequip it so i'm not overweight and um it, you know it's a little bit more of a hassle than just casting golden vow so the the convenience is there if you want to use golden vow for that it's just five percent difference in damage right black blade's nice um you know lightning spear is my bread and butter i use that for mostly just clearing and you know easier bosses that you can melt pretty quick with like four of them where you're hitting for two three k um you know and they've only got 10k health uh so that's a, an incredible s skill it's a charge skill so you do more damage the longer you charge it up um this is kind of as you saw in the preview of the video my bread and butter for trying to one shot big bosses um and if you you want to use this skill um comments section has been kind of going off with people saying oh it doesn't work as patch this that no uh this is just a very particular method to how to use this skill and there's rng involved and there's a lot of uh, technique involved so your your placement of where you are in relation to the boss that you're trying to attack is important you have to be close you can't just come in the door and cast it and even though it looks like it's going to go across the map and hit him it won't um you have to it's a chargeable skill so you have to charge it because you know the range of it will will increase as you charge it um and you have to realize that there is some rng the uh the strikes are going kind of all over the place and people are like oh you know i i don't believe that you know you're able to hit market for you know six thousand that early in the game um well if you slow the video down yeah you'll see that the strikes you know if each individual strikes doing 1500 i hit market five times in that video so that's how i one shot so there is rng involved you know like i'm not saying that you can't but this skill would not exist otherwise you, you should there's no skill that you should be able to just walk in press r1 and do 40,000 damage on a boss like they would never put that in a game like this um but this skill if you are patient and you figure out the mechanics of it and you play with it a little bit this is the skill as you saw in a lot of my videos um that you can one shot basically and not basically that you can one shot i think any boss in the game um if you buff and you really push the limits of the buffs and we'll talk about that later um vikes is incredible for um you know if you are wanting to get in some melee with this build uh, i added like over 300 damage i believe um i don't i don't know the exact number but it was a lot of damage on the stock when i tested it um giant's flame take the is my go-to uh well i almost said spell uh incantation for for fire um and it's a chargeable skill as well and it says here charging enhances the potency and causes the ball to explode so it's a huge explosion it knocks down most enemies um especially annoying enemies like boss adds it, it knocks them down to the ground and does insane damage if you fully charge it up it does a lot more damage um so again make sure you're holding that r1 down charging it up same with this skill um insane damage it's basically firestorm from dark souls 1 which is how i did my soul level 1 one shot every boss in, in dark souls 1 was firestorm so this kind of um uh, hit a sweet spot for me in terms of taking me down memory lane and it also melts you saw me one shot radagon with it it's 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 sweet it's a charge skill as well you get more pillars charge it up flame cleanse me uh incredible for uh getting rid of scarlet rot it's definitely a very good utility skill to have uh when you're going to go somewhere like the lake of rot definitely uh use this skill it's you can find it right there on your way up to the artist shack when you're getting lightning spear it's right on the way definitely grab it it's just sitting there on the ground for the taking um grab that skill 
flame gripping strength uh, definitely one of the best skills in the game. So it gives you 20% additional fire damage uh, to all fire damage. That means your blasphemous blade, uh, special attack, and all that. Uh, also 20% of physical damage. Grab it. It's incredible. Swarm of flies. It's all right. It's pretty good on this build. Um, Pest thread. Same thing. It's all right. It's not gonna blow your mind. Um, and then Rotten Breath is a, you know, for beginners that are really struggling and looking for a way to kill a boss, this skill is insane. Um, like the, the Beast Clergyman, like if you're getting, you know, just absolutely torn up in there, you could just stand literally on the other side of the pillar and breathe it through the pillar and uh, put Scarlet Rot on him and kill him quickly. It's, it's nuts. Uh, this is the, like, most underrated spirit dash in the game and i used it from day one i always thought as a you know casting build this is the best in the game uh you get five great shield soldiers they're super tanky i mean they're great shield soldiers they just literally don't have a weapon they have a giant shield that they're two-handing uh insanely tanky especially at like plus nine or plus ten uh almost unkillable and they they draw a lot of aggro and they survive really well and that's exactly what you want is five tanks running around um to distract stuff if you're a newer player you know i don't really use spirit ashes but at newer players and stuff get this one try it you'll thank me um let's look at a blasphemous blade setup right so for your you're wanting to play a little bit more weapon based instead of incantation based um you know throw your giant seal on your left hand and uh your blasphemous blade on your right hand and because uh, obviously if you're going blasphemous blade you want to max your fire damage right so we're going to switch to radagon so that we're not overweight um, we're going to throw on our Shard of Alexander so that we get a ton more damage off the actual weapon skill. And then we're going to switch from Lightning to the uh, the Flame talis uh, flame Scorpion Charm uh, Talisman. Um, and that's why we're switching to Giant Seal. Because you're going to want to be using Fire uh, Incantations because you're using a Fire Weapon. So you might as well just maximize um, your damage output and kind of consolidate it between Incantation and uh, Weapon Art. Um, and then again that first slot you know the uh you know the ritual sword is what i go because i'm generally just trying to stay full health but do whatever you want in that slot all right so let's talk the uh the damage buff breakdown in 1.03 because a lot of people are like oh man you know and, and i had to unfortunately recycle some of uh, some of the clips from 1.02 because uh you know like i just didn't have the time to go and like do a 15 hours worth of attempts on on elden beast for example so um unbuffed uh you know for one strike of your ancient dragon lightning strike not you know all the strikes or you know if i hit you know more get five times like each individual strike so like you know on uh you know if you were to hit him three times you'd get a 1500 damage uh you know off his health bar um if you un have an unbuffed strike of 500 i want to show you like how quickly it escalates especially in 1.03 to show that there's even more damage than there was with resolve um so a buffed strike if it starts at 500 would be 2888 would you know almost 3000 which means if you're hitting five times, right, then you're almost at 15,000 instead of almost 2,500 with an unbuffed strike, which is, you know, that's huge. So let's kind of get into the details of how that's happening, right, with our 500 unbuffed strike. Our Gravelstone Seal is giving us 15%, right? So to basically the, the basic math of that would be 500 times 1.15, right, 15 additional percent uh, damage would, would push that to 575 then our rallying standard is 20 percent right so we take 1.2 times that 575 and now we're at 690 damage uh this is and you're starting to see you know why multiplicative damage buffs are absolutely insane so that's 690 uh we get into our bleed setup now right with our white mass it's the first part of our bleed setup 10 percent more damage so 1.1 times 690 we're at 759 now um and this is why, you know, you need Seppuku, right? So Seppuku procs our White Mask, and now it also procs our Lord of Blood's Exaltation, which is 20% more. So now our 759 times 1.2 becomes 911. Uh, so Seppuku procced both of those, the White Mask and the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, 30% combined. Um, so now our self-poisoning uh, from eating those dumplings, where our Mushroom Crown gives us 10, so that 911 times 1.1 puts us at 1,002. And then the other half of the self-poisoning uh, is your Kindred of Rot's Exaltation. Um, so it's additional, you know, so the, the self bleed and the self poison are both 30% combined. So now your 1002 times 1 1.2, we're at 1202 um, after our self bleed and our self poison. So 60% alone just off the bleed and poison. So then we got our Lightning Scorpion Charm, uh, 12%. Or fire, or whatever you know, element you end up using there. Uh, so 1202 uh, times 1 1.12, 1306 or 1346 now, uh, and then our lightning shrouding tier or flame shrouding tier, depending on again element, still 20% either way. 1346 times 1 1.2, 1615. Uh, our Godfrey icon, like I said, 
basically every skill that I showed you, every skill that we're using, the, the four major of the two elements um, are charged. So that 15% is basically just a permanent buff to our build. Um, so that 1615 becomes 1857. And then the Red Feather Branch Sword, if you're really pushing the maximum damage, which we are for the sake of argument here, um, otherwise it'd be 10% instead of 20, which isn't a major difference. Um, if you were going, you know, full health with the Ritual Sword. Um, so, you know, that 1857 becomes 2229. Our Flux Canvas Talisman, which is 8% of all of our, canvas, uh, all of our incantations, no matter what, uh, 2229 now becomes 2407, right? 2229 times 1.08, 2407. Um, then the jellyfish shield, which is huge. It's another big 20 percenter. Um, and that's the, something you're only going to see on the, uh, incantations because your weapon arts, you know, you can't use a jellyfish shield weapon art and then your like blast display weapon art. But for incantations, it's 20 percent more. So now our lightning our you know, per strike went from 2407 to 2888. So that's, you know, now we are, and this is lightning only, right? So on a, you know, single strike, we went from 500 to 2888. Then there's fire specific buffs. Um, so we can push that even further. And um, I'm not going to do the actual math, but I'm going to show you. So uh, Flame Grammy Strength gives us 20% uh, physical and fire. So 20% additional uh, damage if it is a fire incantation on top of you know where we're at on the 2888. And then um, on top of the Flame Grammy Strength, we have the Giant Seal being a 5% difference, right? So the Gravelstone Seal, the Lightning you know, variant uh, is 15% damage. So we get an additional 5% there. Um, and then the oil pot, which is huge. So the oil pot gives you 50%. Um, and and it's only on one attack, right? But a lot of times that's all you need if you're, you know, um, you've got a boss that's weak to fire or something. So 50% is insane, right? Because let's say that we're only at, you know, after the, the flame grant me strength and the giant seal difference, um, there, instead of 2888, we're only at 3000, right? We would be much higher. I'm not going to do the math right now, but you know, we, let's say there was 3000 even for the sake of math being, being simple math. Well, now with the oil pot, 50% more, now we're at 4,500. Like we just jumped up from 3000 to 4,500. It's insane. Cause you know, you're taking 50% half. Um, so, you know, and a 50% buff is, is nuts, even if it is only for one attack. Um, so your fire, I mean, so then you're talking about the difference of 4,500 versus 500, um, on an, on a, let's say, you know, like a fireball, like a, uh, unbuffed versus uh, buffed. Well, 45, I mean, that's nine fold increase in damage. Um, and that's very low, like relatively low. I mean, you know, like the, the 500 number, because I mean, you can see some big numbers in this game. Once you really start to rack this, this, uh, you know this chain of buffs up together because it's all multiplicative so it's just it's it's pretty in insane i'm going to show you a video like really quick and and kind of part on that um but i'm going to show you a video to kind of prove because sometimes i have the comment section like ready to burn me at the stake like no there's no way it's not possible you're not actually doing that damage to that cheat engine so uh, i want to like go out and prove it right so we're going to go out and, and we're going to uh you know, we're going to take a regular lightning spear and we'll, we'll throw it at an enemy. And then we're going to do this all in the same enemy, right? So that we know that it's the same exact resist and all that stuff. And then we're going to use the, the rallying standard, let's say. And then we'll say, okay, we did this. We should expect 20% increase in damage. So if we do 1,000 damage, we should see 1,200. 1.2 times whatever damage we do. Uh, we should expect that and we'll go and see if we did that. And then from there, we'll take that number and we'll add in another um, source like the lightning shrouding tier, our flask. We'll throw our flask in and we'll say, hey, uh, we should expect 20% of that new number. Um, and what's 1.2 times that new number? And then see if we get it. Um, and then we'll do one last one with like the jellyfish shield for an additional 20%. So that's it should be pretty obvious damage wise. And uh, we'll see, you know, hey, you know, does this actually work the way that he's saying that it works? Spoiler alert of course, it's going to work the way I said it works because this is not a clickbait channel. And I would never mislead you guys. So the first one is going to be no additional buffs. So 1476 damage. Then our second one, we are going to use our lightning crack tier. So we're just going to drink our flask and get that 20% damage from our, our lightning tier. And 1771, that's exactly what we'd expect, 20% additional. So we expect 2126 20, here. Uh, 2126 damage would be 20% more adding in the rallying standard and the flask so there we go 2126 exactly what we expect now 2126 times 1.2 an additional 20 percent from the shield on top of the other buffs we expect 
2551, right? So we got our flask, there's our rallying standard, and now the jellyfish shield is 20% more. So 20% from 2126 is 2551, and there you go. All right, so the, like the numbers don't lie, right? So uh, so we can put that to rest. So the the big thing I want to say, because we're getting kind of long here in this video, um, but I, I just wanted to get all this data out. Um, I want to address kind of the witch hunt in the comment sections that I've seen about like, you know, um, this is impossible, you know, like this is, you know, you're uh, without real night resolve, this and that. So I want to just like the basic math, right? If you go and look at my one shot challenge run um, where, you know, uh, from 1.02, um, there's a lot more damage available now than there was uh, for me then. I, and not that there wasn't available, that I just didn't know. It was so early in the game after launch that there was a lot of stuff I didn't know. So um, when you take that into account, um, you know, basically the White Mask with the Lord of Bread's Exaltation, the Mushroom Crown with the Kindred of Rot's Exaltation, um, that's 60% right there. The Gravelstone Seal, because I was using the Erd Tree Seal, right? And uh, I'll get more into seals and stuff, in my, like I said, in my in-depth guide uh, tomorrow. But I saw the big incantation scaling number and i said oh you know my eyes got real big because you know being a soul veteran i said hey that's directly proportional to because they use a skill multiplier so it's directly proportional to how much damage you're going to do so the higher incantation scaling is is the way to go and so you know i was using earth tree seals you, you can go see in all my videos uh gravel stone um would have given me a lot more the giant seal would you know even more uh for like the radagon f uh, fight you know for example the the giant seal i didn't know about um the oil pot that 50 that 50 percent more damage so like i don't remember the exact number i one shot radagon for um with fire but it was like literally uh 12 or 14 thousand but you take if i hit him with the oil pot i mean then you're taking uh 50 percent more of of let's call it uh 12 right for the sake of argument we'll go low and say 12 well now it's eighteen thousand. i mean it's huge that's a huge jump and, and something that i just didn't know about back back in 1.02 um and so like, like i said um you've got just from the self bleed and the uh the self poison setup that's 60 percent you've got either 15 percent or 20 percent depending on if it's gravel stone seal or, or giant seal um compared to the archery seal that i was using let's go on the low end and say 15 so 60 plus 15 is 75 um and then we take into account like the jellyfish shield and that pushes us up in, you know up to 95 you know like it's it's very quick to push up past you know Roy Knight Resolve on on with the stuff that we have now available in terms of like you know what we know about for pre-buffing um you know and obviously this is a a very niche um situation right where you'd want to put all these buffs on and go for a one shot but um I did want to like explain you know how it's done and that it is absolutely possible on this patch and and you can do even more damage based on the math um, you know, cause like I didn't have access to the jellyfish shield on my run because I, you know, starting at level one, I had to one shot a boss to be able to go to level two. Then I had to one shot a boss to go to level three, um, and so on and so forth. So like, I didn't have access to stats. So if you go and look at that video, I ended at level 69, right? I didn't have the strength for the jellyfish shield and all this stuff. That's 20% more damage. Um, so there's a lot of damage on this patch guys. So try it out, have some fun. Let me know how it goes and we'll see you guys on the strength build.